Welcome to BizWire. I'm Joseph Nordstrom in Beijing. China's annual parliamentary meetings kick off this week with discussions on a range of issues facing the country from economic and financial reforms to social policy to national security. And while the world mourns the 29 killed and over 130 injured in Saturday's terrorist attack at a Kunming railway station, political and business leaders gathered in Beijing to steer the country's course forward. The attackers are believed to come from China's northwestern region of Xinjiang, where ethnic tension has erupted in violent clashes in the past. In Xinjiang, Beijing has spent billions turning the capital of Urumqi into a modern city, leaving leaders puzzled as to the source of hostility, which can be boiled down to a feeling of a loss of ethnic identity and self-determination. As Evan Osnos wrote this week in The New Yorker, ethnic groups in China are not united by ideology, but by faith that economic growth will make their lives more prosperous. And Beijing hopes that if GDP continues to clock ever upwards, the disenchantment will ease as life becomes materially more comfortable. Part of China's economic strategy in developing Xinjiang is to revitalize the connections further west along the old Silk Road routes. China is spending billions on building oil and natural gas pipelines into Central Asia that will bring much needed energy east, but also leaving added revenue along the way. In January, China announced with some fanfare that it would turn Urumqi into a transport, financial and logistics center of what is billed as the new Silk Road Economic Belt. The ambitious initiative also looks to build economic and security ties across Asia and into Europe, as well as a maritime Silk Road belt connecting the Pacific, Indian and Atlantic Oceans. By last November, Silk Road Economic Belt agreements were signed with 24 cities from eight countries along the Silk Road. As China's connection to its Central Asian neighbors, Xinjiang will lead the promotion of a free trade zone with countries along the route with a focus on agriculture, energy and tourism. Some say China would do better to strengthen its cooperation with other countries regarding counterterrorism to reduce the risks posed by the Kunming attack. Others say Beijing should listen more closely to grievances regarding protecting unique cultures. A talk of the Silk Road economic belt is predicated on stability in Central Asia and the security situation within China, both of which are challenging to say the least and high on the agenda this week in Beijing. And whether economic growth will bring peace and stability to the region or can only come as a result from it remains to be seen. You're watching BizWire on the Blue Ocean Network, China's first and only privately owned English language broadcast media. Our full episode can be seen on our website, bon.tv backslash biz dash wire. Let's turn now to Neil Jones for a quick look at a few stories that are buzzing through the markets.